You're going to be a billion dollar company, what, in the next two to five years? Uh, I selling would, lubricants. Selling lubricants, fuels, cosmetics, surfactants, and a whole range of other products. How can you be so sure? I, I mean, we're in a down economy going into a possible double dip, and you're talking about continued growth. Uh, absolutely. I, I think uh, the offering that we offer is a no compromise offering, cost competitive offering, green comparable product to the existing product across a range of business lines, but that only gets you so much confidence. Mm -hmm. I think the confidence comes from the degree of customer engagement we've had. I know when you put it out there that you're, you're really you know, gearing up and, and really headed for that billion dollar mark over the next few years, investors are going to be betting on that. Yeah. I mean, if, if you don't do that mm -hmm. and you don't make it there, you're going to be in big trouble. From a company that was founded a matter of only a handful of years ago on a non-profit basis, we've now emerged as a leading company in renewable fuels and chemicals. That space in itself needs to grow significantly. And we, and we see the demand for growth significantly. If you take the space that we're looking at, which is a petroleum space, you could take it on a basic supply demand. The what numbers are you looking at for that? You could look at the IEC numbers. You could look at uh, the international, uh, uh, the, the latest projections. Which are? The latest projections would have us about 85 million barrels produced per day right now, with Chinese demand uh, itself over the next 20 or 30 years outstripping that alone. The crude slate itself is deviating from the conventional norm of light, sweet crudes. So you're moving into a space where there are more challenging crudes to produce, and I think the energy, energy industry in general is the, the first industry that actually acknowledged that. You can hear CEOs of major oil companies talk about the end of easy oil. Right. And so you've heard those phrases. That's, that's not something that... Uh, you made up. That we made up. No, no, so <laughs> It's something that conforms... Just to clarify. <laughs> no, it's something that conforms to our belief about how the space is going to move. I, but I think also when you look at, at, at uh, Infineon, or you look at NASCAR, you look at other enterprises that have not conventionally been seen as promoters of sustainable space, of renewable products. Right. And you see that those very, very clear-minded, competitive people with a very clear business view recognize that the sustainable space is very much a space of the future. But do you think it's more of a, a media ploy, or do you think it's truly something that's going to be sustainable over time? It, it would depend very much on what the technology is. Our technology has a, a cost advantage over longer term. Some have cost advantage but can't scale. It's a tough, still a tough sell and a downturn. It's a tough sell, so that's exactly why we have a no compromise offering. And that no compromise offering is we don't expect you to pay more for a renewable, sustainable product. We don't expect you to have a performance mm. degradation. So no compromise. You don't compromise performance. So are you taking a hit on that? I, as we go are forward. Are you eating some of the, the costs right now? You have startup costs. So we have right. to have the startup costs that any, any company has. But our run rate model is very, what very much. What are the margins much, like? I, well, that would be getting in trouble with my CFO. I really couldn't do that. You know I couldn't do that. <laughs> so our margins would be compar very comparable to anyone else in the product space that we work in. So who's nipping at your heels? What is, who could actually prevent you from hitting that billion dollar mark? Many things keep me awake at night. There's absolutely no doubt of that. Um, but I, when I think about it, I think I don't have many competitors that keep me awake. I do look at those established players in the industries where we're bringing an alternative product. Like who? Those are challenged. Well, if you look at Chevron, if you looked at Exxon. The Chevron, Exxon, Shell, I think those companies in and of themselves see the need for an opening of that space, and they see also the supply demand equation of the future. So they see that that's not necessarily a dilution of their space; it's an alternate. I mean, it truly is an alternate. But their cash flow, with their their big uh, war chest they have now, they could easily snatch you guys up before you. I, they, they, they could indeed.